Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this, today's edition of the program, the Pan-African uh, Debate on the Pan-African Television Africa Media. Uh, today we are going to dive into a very important topic, which is empowering Africa, looking at the role of the continent in uh, the uh, global transformation. Uh, uh, it is noted uh, that uh, the world is, uh, it should be noted that the world is taking another dimension. And of course, we want to look at Africa's perspective in uh, this uh, world new order or new world order and of course the aspect of global trans uh, transformation we want to also understand Africa's uh, perspective and uh, to note uh, that when we want to look at Africa's perspective in global transformation we want to focus uh, 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 on key areas uh, like we have uh, the economic uh, growth natural resources uh, let's look at uh, the, the the aspect of sovereignty sustain sustainable development the place of innovation and technology and of course human capital uh, uh, development uh, it is uh, always uh, said uh, that Africa is uh, the uh, future, Africa is the cradle of mankind, but then uh, with uh, the changes uh, that have occurred in the global world, especially in uh, the 21st century, we want to continue analyzing Africa's role in all of uh, these changes, bringing Africa's uh, position or perspectives as far as globalization is concerned, as far as global transformation is uh, concerned. Uh, uh, this is what we are going to analyze together uh, for two hours uh, with uh, this uh, panel of experts uh, joining us to give a broader, a broader insight on a topic for a discussion uh, uh, this day on African media, uh, precisely in the Pan-African uh, debate. Without uh, wasting much time, we'll go straight away uh, to unveiling the panel. And let's uh, kick off with uh, uh, Dr. A.D. Erika, uh, Program Officer, Solidarity Center, Africa uh, Department, who is joining us uh, from the United States of America. Hello to you, Dr. A.D. It's always a pleasure having you join us to brainstorm and to analyze on issues concerning Africa and the world at large. The pleasure is mine as well, Clarice. I want to say hi to all of my other uh, co-panelists of uh, the day. Uh, I'm sure from uh, South Africa to uh, anywhere else. I'm going to not make a mistake of uh, saying names. The easiest one is uh, Viola in and here, Lucy and uh, Brother Paseka. Uh, I believe uh, it's my pleasure to be here, Clarice Romota. A pleasure to have you share your insight on topical issues uh, concerning the African uh, continent. We continue with another gentleman and we're going straight away to South Africa. Let's uh, meet uh, Paseka Faromeli, a member of the, of the Convention for Pan Africanism and Progress. It's a pleasure having you this day, dear Paseka. Uh, thank you very much, Clarice. I'm looking forward to having this engagement with my fellow panelists and uh, maybe coming up with solutions that might lead Africa to a better and more prosperous future. Uh, I hope that the, the the engagement will have some kind of um, some kind of repercussion at the end, which can be actionable. I don't know by who uh, who has the power and authority, but I'm hoping that it does lead to something at the end. Thank you, Clarice. I must welcome. Thank you for accepting to be with us this day. Indeed, uh, we uh, hope that uh, after this uh, debate program, uh, this will go a long way to change perspectives across the African continent. And of course, it's coming at a time of uh, global changes, even across the African continent, the wind of change that is blowing. Let it be uh, at every sphere, and of course, uh, positively, that will see a total transformation. And that is what we're centered on today, dear Paseka, empowering Africa, getting Africa's perspectives in global transformation. And now we're going to Germany. We're meeting Madame Invioleta Ma. Cover a Zimbabwean but based in Germany, and she is joining us thus day in her capacity as a social and early childhood educator. It's a pleasure having you on the Pan African debate for the first time, Madam. Thank you very much, uh, Clarissa, and my fellow panelists. It is really an honor to talk about Africa, our beautiful continent, and it's uh, uh, 
also interesting how we can uh, bring all our ideas and uh, our insights and see how we can empower our beautiful continent. Thank you very much. Welcome indeed. Uh... Africa needs to be empowered. And then uh, what are the parameters? Who are the stakeholders that have to uh, stand at the forefront of these in uh, the changing times? We appreciate you for accepting to be with us this day. And of course, uh, going to East Africa, uh, let's uh, meet uh, Lucia and Cherry Irungu, who is joining in her capacity as a peace and security analyst. Uh, Karibu, Lucy. Uh, thank you, Sana. Clarice, thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored to be joining. I'm joining from Kenya here in Nairobi and so honored to share this platform with Dr. A.D. Viola and Paseka. I'm looking forward to a very insightful conversation on what we can do to improve our continent, but also what we have the capacity and potential of our continent to offer to the rest of the world. So I'm really looking forward to this insightful conversation. And I thank you so uh, so much uh, for accepting to be with us this day. Of course, let the voices of women, of African women, be heard on uh, topical issues surrounding the continent of Africa. And I will kick off the debate uh, with you, uh, Dr. A.D. Well, before I come to you, let's just remind uh, viewers just tuning in uh, that this is the Pan-African debate, and it is informative as well as constructive and uh, participatory as well. And of course, we are running live on Facebook on our freak media. You can keep your comments there as far as uh, the, uh, the, the topic is concerned. And of course, in the course of the program, you equally have the opportunity to call live and uh, also contribute uh, you on quarter to this uh, very important topic of uh, this day. Uh, coming back to you, uh, Dr. A.D. Erika, we are talking about uh, empowering Africa and also looking at uh, Africa's perspective in uh, the world of global transformation before actually touching on the key areas where Africa can actually capitalize to be able to maximize the advantages uh, that comes with uh, this uh, uh, new world order and uh, this global transformation. Uh, I would love to, to have a holistic understanding uh, from you, Dr. Eddie uh, Eric, regarding global transformation and uh, the, the perspective of Africa, especially in uh, the uh, 21st century. Thank you, Clarice. A few uh, years ago, maybe uh, about two decades, uh, decades now, I'm sorry, in uh, not just uh, the uh, political arena, but also in uh, the academic world, we have heard, uh, we have heard of uh, globalization and the ways in which you know, it has uh, uh, been transforming the world that you know, we live in. Today, as we talked about this topic of uh, uh, the world, you know, or global transformation or international transformation, I want to uh, bring our listeners today to uh, look at it from uh, different perspectives. When we look at the world economy today, we know that, you know, uh, after uh, many years, for instance, when it comes to Africa, of uh, practicing uh, this uh, IMF, uh, International Monetary Funds, and the World Bank, you know, were inspiring uh, structural adjustment, for instance, uh, what has uh, that, you know, what led us. In the meantime, also in the 1990s, we witnessed uh, this uh, uh, revival of a new liberalism by, uh, or through which, um, uh, international financial institutions have a call on countries uh, to uh, practice what more we call a very liberal economy in terms of uh, breaking down, you know, all borders and letting uh, cash, you know, flow in all directions. This has become much more uh, prominent now. This as we talk about the digitalization of uh, the world economy. But what is more important for us uh, to look at is again, you know, what has been the outcome. Uh, or what have been the outcomes of the practice of this uh, very uh, aggressive neoliberalism you know, in the, the world uh, today. In uh, As far as Africa is concerned, you know, what the question mark is, after over 20 years of uh, practicing this neoliberal you know, policies for our economies, what does that mean? Not long ago, I was listening to a video from uh, a Nigerian economist addressing 
the uh, Nigerian parliament and talking about uh, how since 1986 in Nigeria, the practice of the structural adjustment program has led this country to devalue its currency. Whereas almost 30 years ago, the Nigerian Naira was the equivalent of uh, uh, for one Naira, you have a one dollar or one American dollar, you have one Naira. Today, it is uh, close to 800 uh, dollars. What has that produced? And this is the case of Nigeria. What happened to uh, the French speaking African countries where by 1994, for instance, the French CFA was uh, devalued to the point that, you know, what we have today, one uh, euro for close to about you know, 600 uh, French CFA, uh, for instance. To what extent that this has stalled uh, industrialization in Africa, to what extent this has stalled and uh, confined the uh, continent into its role inherited from the colonial period in terms of uh, producing raw materials to feed. And we are therefore talking about maintaining the continent in uh, this sphere of what we call uh, the uh, periphery where uh, uh, in uh, of, uh, the world economy. There is another way of looking at this uh, global transformation it is uh, what I will call the rise of autocratic rule. I uh, don't want to use necessarily the term middle world democracy today, but we all know by uh, statistics that you know, less and less people, not just in Africa, but all over the world today are living in a free and fair societies. And in that you know, realm, Women, of course, whether they are workers or not, they are working in the formal sector or informal sector, suffer to us as much of uh, this recess of uh, what we can call you know, social justice for uh, staying away of using the word you know, democracy uh, in India. So this is a rise of autocratic rule. What does that you know, entail for uh, the continent? And we are witnessing that more and more. Very definitely, as we talked about that, uh, I believe that you know we can also look at the geopolitical shifts. And on this uh, show and many others, uh, what we see in uh, Ukraine, what we see in terms of, of Russia raising its uh, head more and uh, building more relationship with uh, African countries, uh, what we've seen um, the European uh, Union and even the United States also doing with African countries, definitely there is uh, a clear a geopolitical shift in India with the rise of China as well, which again are calling into question what role Africa should play. And as we look at that, we are talking about the question of territory. When we look at what is happening in the Sahel today and the involvement of the entire world, we wanted to question again the question of sovereignty as you talked about. And this is again, you know, calling into play. Unfortunately, today we are witnessing another uh collapse or downfall or uh, of, a, of, of a world peace with what is happening in the Middle East uh, in, uh, in, uh, between Palestine and Israel. There is also another aspect of this uh, global transformation, uh, Clarice, that we may also want to be interested in is the uh, uh, world population. When we are hearing from statistics that, you know, in the next few years, Africa as a continent will be the receptacle of over 40% of young people in the world, this calls into question what exactly uh, should be the role of the continent in India. And this is very important because as we talked about uh, the number of young people, automatically we are also looking at uh, the workforce, which means that in a few years, the workforce is going to be located mostly in Africa. What does that mean? And this is another uh, global transformation that you know what we are witnessing. Another one very quickly is uh, the uh, digitalization of the world. In all aspects, COVID-19 came and we saw how we all started relying on uh, the internet. And anything that you know what we do nowadays from work, from the economy, the way we live, the way even we vote, how we include that, the way even we go to see the doctor. Now we talk about telehealth and all of those things, right? This is a changing fundamentally the ways in which we've been living, even delivering food, receiving food, producing food, and all of those things in there, transferring money, bankerization, uh, uh, access to uh, uh, bank services. I mean, a whole different aspect of the life that you know, believe have been changed and continuously being changed by uh, this uh, digitalization. It is uh, great for us to analyze again, as we talk about uh, the uh, internet penetration in Africa, where exactly 
the African continental affair into that. What kind of a job opportunities are being created, but also in terms of education? It is one thing to have access, but it's another thing to be able to use those internet products, for instance. There is a big question mark in there as well. And of course, as all those things are moving on, I also want to touch on cultural values. They are shifting a lot. They are changing a lot. Uh, and this is also part of the global transformation that we are seeing. Let's take the example of religion, for instance. Today, Christianity is no longer a north, uh, a global north, you know, uh, a phenomenon. It is a global south phenomenon. If you take the Catholic Church for sure, you have uh, many more uh, followers of that denomination in the southern hemisphere. Africa, Latin America, then you do have uh, in the Northern Hemisphere today. What again are those uh, changes that you know, were triggering uh, for uh, all of us? And of course, as we talk about cultural issues, there are issues that have remained prevalent to today as we talk about human rights, as we talk about workers' rights, and as we talk finally about immigration. There are new migration corridors that have emerged. Right. Uh, we know that, you know, well, since uh, the uh, late 1990s and start of uh, the uh, year 2000, uh, North America, for instance, has become, you know, the number one destination in terms of uh, immigration. But even within that, what are the transformation that we are seeing, especially from the Africa continent that we are interested in? We know how many people nowadays are flying from Africa somewhere to Southern Africa, I mean, to Southern uh, uh, America, and then they're trekking from there all the way to the uh, North American borders, the United States and uh, uh, Canada as well. So Clarice, in a nutshell, uh, these are the different dimensions of what I see and understand as uh, this uh, global transformation. Less and less we are hearing about gl uh, globalization, but as I said a few years ago, this is what you know what we have a uh, term this. And Africa's role in that is uh, definitely what uh, we are uh, going to uh, discuss. But thank you for giving me the opportunity to open the debate with uh, just a few uh, pointers in there. Thank you.